This is the Amp Hour Podcast, recorded October 12th, 2016, episode 319, Photon Rich, Cash Poor. Welcome to the Amp Hour. I'm Dave Jones from the EEV blog. And I'm Chris Gamble of Contextual Electronics. What's up, nerd? Hey, man. It's, I was just thinking, we, we haven't actually, like, I mean, we've talked, obviously, but we haven't like yep. recorded talking together in like a couple weeks, so. That's right. So We're here back. we are again. Yes. Yeah, another, another. We've got uh, band back together. Yeah, exactly. And an hour earlier, apparently. <laughs> yeah. Once again, every year, Daylight every year. Saving. I forgot to tell you about Daylight Saving yep. and, yep. Our clock These things went happen. Forward. It's it's anyway. okay. We made it. So, yep. Uh, what have you been it's up to? Good. What's been what's been new on your side of the on the big puddle? Uh, I just uh, did a video exposing well exposing <laughs> the <yes>. expose. Uh, <laughs> uh, key sites. One of key sites popular multimeters the U twelve seventy two. A or 1270 oh, series. Oh, you've done reviews um, on that before, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've done yeah. teardowns reviews. Yeah, yeah. And, it's a, and otherwise a great meter mm-hmm. uh, with some really nice features. And it's very popular. And wah, 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 wah. Um, it's susceptible, highly susceptible to both conducted and radiated um, EM uh, fields oh, really? or electrostatic fields. I don't think it's magnetic. Uh huh. But yeah. you're saying like so if you have if you have a high voltage across like a uh, probe, it'll actually impact your reading or something or what? Uh no. Well, no. Well, yes. If you feed the single-ended output of a function generator mm-hmm. onto the positive terminal while you're measuring current, boom! It just goes crazy. It just goes huge, and then it's susceptible when you put your hand near it. I show in my video that you Uh can make it just go from like one amp up to ten amps just by moving my hand near it. And (laughs) well, wait a second, wait a second. (laughs) Maybe you've learned how to conduct electricity. Have you thought about this, Dave? (laughs) I am obviously has some sort of superpower. You're Magneto uh, now. You're basically (laughs) right. You know, you're Magneto, but you're doing the the right hand rule kind of backwards. <laughs> right, and, yeah, yeah. You know, I, yeah I, I, I should have done the right hand thumb, you know, the, the right, yeah, the thumb thing. <laughs> oh, that would have been funny. Anyway, all I know is that sales of this thing are going to skyrocket to the free energy uh, movement because. You know, nice. Oh, yeah. man. Right, it's, just yeah, wave your anyway. arms and you generate electricity. So, wait a second, though. Um, would that have been caught in testing? I mean, that wouldn't have been caught in well, FCC is, testing or anything, right? Well, there is an IEC um, EMC standard. And uh-huh. uh, if you read the most manuals for most um, uh, you know, high-end multimeters, specify that they're uh, compliant to the standard and they will uh, meet a certain volts per meter um, mm, right. in field. Okay. Right, you know, I think it's three volts per meter or something, and it's yeah. supposed. To, I'm not sure over what range, frequency range, and everything else. It's you know, I don't know the mm-hmm. standard, but yeah, it's you know, it's been tested for this sort of stuff. But all you have to do is sit it next to the BNC output of a function generator, and mm-hmm. it upsets the reading. Just sit, you, you yeah. don't even have to touch anything. Just sit it next to the coax that's generating a ten volt square wave, right? And boom, it's you know, and your reading's way out of spec. Wow. Like, okay. Yeah, it's it's That's serious. interesting. You know, it's also interesting thinking about like that that could have passed test and then, you know, there could be that that kind of those same kind of IEC standard tests. You don't always test for those in production. So there could be over time it could just be like a degraded problem where it just didn't get checked against, you know. Oh, no, I doubt it. I think it's inherent design. It must be an inherent design flaw. I don't think anything's changed in production. Do you know that what the what it. was the date code on your stuff? I mean, like, oh, I mean, that, my, that would I've, be the I've checker, got an right? old meter. It, it yeah. still has the Agilent name on it, right? Oh, there you so go. Yeah. It's you know, All yeah, right. yeah. yeah, that's true. It's, it's pretty old. Interesting. So yeah, it. Anyway, um, who found, who found course, it? Did you find uh, it? Or, or no, form? one of my uh, viewers emailed me oh. and said, "Hey, look, um, he, uh, what, what he was doing was uh-huh. uh, he was uh, testing. He was measuring current for a power supply of a project." from mm-hmm. his power supply, you know, putting the meter in series, as you do. And it was near to a uh, one of those um, RFID card readers. Like and, in a lab, and, like, a, like a door yeah, check-in kind of thing? 
Yeah, one of those, yeah, okay. swipey type things, you know. Yeah. And um, presumably one of the 13 megahertz versions. Yeah. Right. And, and he noticed all these readings were going funny. And he, you know, played around yeah. and finally found that, you know. Yeah, if you, right. Yeah. It's susceptible. Isn't that fun and too it, when you're when you're like doing that troubleshooting? You're like, you, personally, I always like hold a piece of cardboard above it. I'm like, is it the light? Right. Is it inducing 60 hertz? Yeah, or, you yeah, know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. What exactly. is going on here? You know, like. And and ironically, um, somebody just replied because I haven't in depth tested this. I haven't swept it and found mm-hmm. you know the sweet point frequency resonant or whatever you know. Mm-hmm. The worst case frequency. Somebody on YouTube um, did it. Somebody in the comments said, "Hey, I, I tested mine, and it seems to re- it seems to be worse around 13 megahertz, which is precisely yeah, the RFID yeah, yeah. frequency." <laughs> right, it's 13.56. Isn't that like yeah, the yeah, standard yeah, something RF? Something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, oops, huh. um, it's totally reminiscent of the uh, fluke one. Um, if you remember my videos from the video from like four years ago or something, hmm. the, the fluke multimeter, or five years ago. Hmm. Uh, somebody found if you put a GSM phone next to oh, it, it yeah, just yeah. locks up, and and actually you can brick it. Right. You can brick the yeah. So they it took them a year to fix that, and right. finally and release and that's a new the, version because the GSM stuff is like super high pulse, like it's super it's like yeah, an amp of current for like yeah. a twenty milliseconds, was, right? Mm, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. And yeah. and it just so happens that the GSM frequency range, uh-huh. uh, from memory, this is from so. I, my memory is pretty rusty, but anyway, the GSM frequency range was uh, matching to a tray, a PCB trace on one of the programming on the programming line for the MSP430 processor that was putting it into some programming mode. Huh. So, but it was only worked on GSM. It wouldn't work on other mobile phone frequencies, right? Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah, because they're all yeah. different parts of the spectrum. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and then but, uh, others yeah. hop around but, more and stuff, right? Yeah. So that happened to that happened to be the uh, frequency of like a PCB trace loop that they had in there on the programming line, and it's mm-hmm. like, you know, you could not have found this. You know, you could have compliance tested this to the hilt, and right. you would not have found it. You know, like, right? And it's, it's probably just, at a certain point, like you, you can't test everything, but like, man, no, that's, no, that's right. That's crazy. That's, really but that's actually a common uh, thing to do, actually, a tip. If you're designing your product and, you know, you don't want to do compliance, you know, or, or you just want to do some basic, <laughs> right, right. or you just want to do some basic you testing, yeah. Yeah, you know, right. just some, you know, to it's see the if bench. it's... Does it, is this totally messed up, right? Exactly. Just yeah. get your mobile phone, put it near it, because it's mm-hmm. pumping out all sorts of crap, yeah. right? Yeah, and I just, think we used yeah. to key off some VHF radios as well. Like it dep- yeah. I mean, obviously, it's going to be different frequency ranges and stuff, but yeah, any but kind of... The, RF, RF thing. Yeah, yeah, but it's not only got the RF, but I've done a video way back, like episode 20 or something, mm-hmm. um, on how there's a two, I think it's 218 hertz, is that it actually repeats those packets. As you were saying, you know, a pulse every 20 milliseconds or whatever, it's like, yeah. it's, I believe it's like 218 hertz and that is picked up in audio stuff you know if you've ever heard oh, that yeah, yeah, you yeah. know if you ever had your mobile phone near your car radio or something you hear this dit, 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 you know yeah yep, um kind yep. of thing yep that's that's that 218 pulse you know uh, cycle packet sending mm-hmm. thing and that gets picked up so in that's audio crazy. circuits so yeah and there's actually techniques to reduce that and stuff like that so Dave, this must be why I'm getting sick all the time from all this radiation uh, all around <laughs> right, us, right? Yeah, radiation. You need to go to one of those towns in the U.S. Right. that are radiation-free. I was actually just thinking about lining my entire apartment with uh, tinfoil. <laughs> right, you know? Tinfoil, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just, you know, not grounded, though. Just floating. Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> because you don't want any of that dirty energy from the earth. Right, you know? right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway. So that's, yeah, that, uh, you know, even big companies like this, you can come a gutsa. And mm-hmm. nobody, you know, this meat has been out there for five years. And yeah. basically nobody's found this until now. And it's bleedingly obvious when you know. Well, that's the other know? interesting thing, right? So, so uh, <clears throat> okay, so what was on the list? Um, I forget. One of the, there was a new open source um, RF project. I forget. It might, it might have disappeared. Um, but basically it was like... Uh, programmable radio like an sdr radio type this of thing this is the faraday RF? oh there it is yeah faraday yep. rf so and, and you know like a lot of these things so i was hanging out with mike osman recently yep. and you know just like hack rf all these things that are programmable radios but two of the things you know you'd think oh well maybe we could just set these up to test at different frequencies but 
to get the same kind of power, like to be licensed to get that same kind of power, you know, you shouldn't just be, like, you could just sweep through all these frequencies, but yeah, right. <laughs> you'd be kind of breaking the law. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like, right. Your neighbors would be like, what the hell is happening here? <laughs> my, so, my, my, my garage door just opened. Yeah, right, you know? exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so I, I, I just don't know if that, I mean, like there is, there's obviously testing labs and those are licensed to do this kind of stuff, but yeah, it's, right. I like your idea about the, you know, just the kind of the gut check on the bench, but yeah. other than that, it's kind yeah. of, yeah, interesting. Hmm. So. so there you go. This can happen to the best, you know, Fluke both. This has happened to both Fluke and Keysight now. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, it's yeah. it's huge. And it and it's not easy to fault find these things. People say, "Oh, why didn't I just take it apart and find the and find the faulty component?" You know, mm -hmm. it's like it ain't that easy. As as Fluke found out, <laughs> um yeah, it was some resonant. Right. It was you know, the the loop track you know it, it, you know the loop going through ground and going through the trace and everything into the programming line was at the correct wavelength of that yep you know i think that that's not easy to find you yeah. know right and so, that's done probably a lot of trial and error a lot of oh yeah yeah that's isolating yeah. removing yep. parts off the board that kind of thing yep. like yeah it's yep. yeah that's that's a tough that's a tough find mm. so so anyway i might do a second video on that actually opening up the meter and at least yeah. having to squeeze around i might be able to you know, come up with something, but I don't even have a schematic, but eh. yeah. anyway, so yeah. there you go. Mm. Crazy. I've got a project too. Oh yeah. What's going on with that? Which, uh, yeah, I was going to do a video on it yesterday, but I did the, uh, uh, yeah, this meter thing instead. Um, mm. <clears throat> so yes, I, hopefully a video will come in shortly on this. I haven't really started on it apart. Well, I've done some, I've taken apart something. I've done some, um, basic background research and stuff um and i've mentioned it before i um you know i purchased those are uh, what are the not raspberry pi they're the banana pie yeah right or is it i oh, know orange pie sorry there's too many bloody pies out there too many slices of the pie orange pie i uh, the orange pie one i got like 10 of those because i was going to have like an uh, orange pie like cluster supercomputer mm -hmm. kind of thing and, and you wanted to do that for uh, not SETI, but something like the, SETI, right? Uh, SETI, Boink. Uh, yeah, oh, Boink, that's the right. Boink yeah, software, right. which allows you to process for anything, right. you know. And that's Even Boink with though, a C, right? Yes, B -O -N -I -C, Boink with a C, C. yes. Yeah. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Berkeley, it stands for Berkeley something, something. or other, because it comes from Berkeley. Anyway, yeah. <clears throat> um, so I, um, you know, look, I could just cobble this together in a day, right? All I've got to do is join the boards together, hook up the power to each one, hook up an Ethernet cable through to a hub, and, you know, Bob's your uncle, right? And slap him in some sort of case with a power supply. No. Right? I don't believe that, but okay, go ahead. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll use it as the, as the crutch for this, for this uh, what discussion. What don't you believe? In a day? Come on, man. It's not hard to hook up power to 10 boards and then hook an Ethernet cable into it uh huh. That's literally all it is. Well, that's assuming everything works in that in the boot up and no, everything too. Though. Uh, no, but I've already done that. I've already programmed oh, a board okay, okay. to do its thing. Right. Okay, so all I've got to do is copy the SD card over to each one and program and I individually okay. set up the channel on each one and boom. Okay. You know. So yeah, it, so like, you were saying you weren't doing this for a certain reason or what? Oh well, no. That that just seemed boring, right? So I wanted like a more <laughs> polished solution, right? Okay. I mean, you know, there's lots of people out there who've done this, right? They've just got, you know, 20 Raspberry Pis and they've hooked them all, you know, built a nice case for them. It's all about building the case, mm. you know, and everything. But it's just like, that's right. all it's it like is, It's like the best right? excuse to get a laser cutter ever. Yeah, yeah, totally, <laughs> right? Which is fine, you know, great. I can so No, no, honey, that. I need to get this for sure. <laughs> yeah, for sure, gotta, yeah. Got to build a computer. <laughs> Definitely couldn't do it in a box. <laughs> and laser they cutter. look fantastic, right? $4,000. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and they look great um but yeah that's all it is like it's just plugging cables in it's not you know there's no laying out boards there's no doing nothing yeah. no making okay. it elegant you know anyway so i thought <clears throat> it'd be interesting to uh actually instead of just buying an ethernet router actually just like design my own onto the board right have like a baseboard that all these boards plugged into be it a raspberry 
pie or an orange pie one or whatever. In mm-hmm. fact, I'm gonna, uh, I might be uh, using the Raspberry Pi Zero. Um, I'll talk about that in a sec. But uh, so I was going to make like a ba- design like a baseboard where all these plugged in. But instead of having like all the Ethernet cables and stuff coming out, which is boring, I'd actually um, do Ethernet via the SPI bus because the SPI bus is available via the uh, header. You know, the expansion. What's it called? Not hat. Mm-hmm. It's the Raspberry. Uh, the hats Raspberry? are like the shield type things, right? Yeah. The, yeah. The shield thing. Yeah. What's the Raspberry Pi's name for the shield? Oh, well, no, I think hat is the official name. Hat, but there was also okay, there was right. also plates. That was also they were oh, called. Oh, okay. That I thought too. hat was beagle bone. Anyway, I don't know. No, Whatever. that's capes. Oh, Jeez, capes. Dave. Oh God, get with the program. Jeez, right. didn't you get your your card, your little oh, handy reference card? Oh, <laughs> <God>. <laughs> <laughs> so many of these things board that anyway. plugs in other board <laughs> anyway so i was going to like stack these like high high density you know like 20 mm-hmm. of them on one motherboard and then have like actually designed the ethernet chipset because mm-hmm. you buy them from digikey right you just get a like a microchip ethernet chipset or whatever right and and you just put that on the board and then you can fan that out and then have those so you basically build your own ethernet controller onto the main board so there's no big ethernet cables running everywhere and all the other crap you know wait wait, wait wait so like what? one one ethernet chip per board no one ethernet chip like usually like they might be like a four or eight channel ethernet chip so you would have to have you know two or three of these ethernet chips on there if you wanted uh-huh. to run 20 of these boards but then you'd also have to have an ethernet to uh, SPI bus uh, converter. Uh, once again, microchip do one of those, and it's supported in the Linux build for uh, oh, Raspberry okay. Pi. Yeah, yeah, I found out this. Oh, I didn't um, know that. After some do research. you know the part yeah. number? Uh, d- d- I've got it open here. Hang on, it's still in my tab. Surely, okay. still in my tab. Come on. Yeah, because I was thinking that that, yes. that would that would be one of the hard parts of like writing that driver. Oh, but yeah, if that's no, already no, written, totally. No, I'm. I, that's great. I probably could, in theory, write that driver, but I'm not going to spend a week doing it, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. um, no, that's just not my thing anymore. I used to be into that sort of stuff. Anyway, it's the microchip um, ENC28J60. So yeah. we can link that in, chip of the yeah. week. Oh. Yeah. Anyway, it, yeah, it's in basically Ethernet to SPI. And it's good for boards like the Raspberry Pi because the Raspberry Pi, uh, sorry, the Raspberry Pi Zero, the $5 one, right, which is a pretty... Almost, I hate to say it, but pretty useless board on its own. Uh-huh. Unless you're doing just a completely standalone embedded controller, it is useless because it has no Ethernet. Mm. It has no, no right. internet Right, it's meant to be plugging into something right? else, right? Yeah. It's meant to be in your Internet of Things wearable or something, right? Uh, sorry, no, it's not even Internet of Things because it has no connection. It has no Wi-Fi. It has no Ethernet. It has no communications at all, right, apart from SPI and UART, Right. So, uh, yeah. yeah, it's basically a standalone board. So as far as most people use what they use Raspberry Pis and other things for, they always connect to the internet somehow, you know. It's, it's right. because there's so much more you can do. Yeah, I was just looking so, up. You have to, like, get to, like, hack, right? So you see Raspberry Pi Zero hack or Wi-Fi. Right. You search for these terms and stuff. Right, you search for these terms. And anyway, so you yeah. can go via, and all you got to do is, like, change the config file in the Linux thing. Um, like the build the build yeah just ch- edit the config file and to one one line of code or whatever and it mm. routes internet connectivity through the spi bus you know like oh, and it's got yeah. support for this chip um, right so usually it would go through like the eth zero e- eth zero yeah, something and like, that. like that yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and switch it to this enc 28j60 and that's almost the command um the huh. command is like 28j60 or something you know like, i was just looking at the pay, the data sheet it's only 10 base t does that matter that you're not you're only at 10 uh, oh 10? no no yeah it doesn't matter because speed okay. isn't an issue with you know uh, with something uh, for the purpose i want it for mm-hmm. i just want to connect to the internet it doesn't matter how slow it is really okay so this is this is for oh this isn't for hooking board to board this is for hooking each everything's going back to, to a the server internet. Each, yeah. everything's going back to the internet and, and yep I see. anyway so interesting okay yep and, and um, yes, yeah. so the so the lot for those out there playing along at home, uh, DT overlay equals ENC twenty eight J sixty. That's the command you've got to put in your config txt file, and bam, uh-huh. it routes your internet through the uh, SPI bus. So that's really cool. Um, and so this has a Mac and a Fi. So that's <coughs> maybe something that's good to explain to people too, because oh, yes. I always yeah. got really confused about this. This has a Mac and a Fi on it. So Correct. basically, you you can just plug this thing. 
right to a, a connector, right? You don't need any. You need the uh, you mag- need magnetics. You, you, but need, you don't the need the magnetics, yes. Right. But yeah. I shouldn't need the magnetics because I'll be talking directly to the Ethernet chip on the same board directly between two Ethernet fires. So in theory, I think. <laughs> I haven't done this, but I shouldn't need the magnetics. The magnetics are only when you're driving the cables and everything else, right? But I'm going like from chip to chip, basically. Interesting. Um, so yeah, yeah. In theory, and I so think you're doing this. Work. So you're doing this versus like an RS forty five or some other some other chip based solution where you'd go board to board or, or chip to chip kind of thing, because the built in support on the on the software side, is that right? Yes, yeah, it just has the built-in support, and each board huh. effectively is its own process, is its own, is its own computer, right? So it's mm-hmm. not, you know, so it's not a sort of a super supercomputer as such, right? Because it's not, you know, the processors can't. Well, they could talk to each other. I could wire I/O between them, right? Mm-hmm. Or they could talk via the Ethernet locally, but right. You know, but then you'd not, have, again, you'd have to get back into the <clears throat> um, yeah. into the the software side of things and, yeah, and, and write your own and, drivers. And, it's exactly, and people could do that anyway. Yeah. Um, but no, all, all I wanted to do was just have I don't know fifty or a hundred, you know, ARM processors. Just I because I thought it'd be cool, you know, just yeah. all running as separate computers, all going back um, to the Boink system. Anyway, I thought that'd be really cool. Now it's probably not that practical from a performance uh, per watt point of view or a performance per cost you know it's probably cheaper just to simply right. go and buy a um nvidia gpu card right and right. and 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 its performance per watt uh is probably right. going to be you know because yeah, that's the ultimate good, measure right of better. yeah how exactly. many how many flops and how many calculations you can get for for um, a for a given price and a given yeah, power for, consumption right right because so, over yeah. time once that first <clears throat> that initial cost is is consumed yep. uh then yeah it's yep. just Cost of power. Yep. And that's right, because you said you're doing this because you have extra solar power, right? I have extra solar power, yes. Yeah. So power is not a huge, you know, hmm. deal. Yeah. So, I'm yeah, so rich, no, in, I'm rich yeah. in electrons. <laughs> Get your rich electrons here. <laughs> I'm photon rich, cash poor. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That, that, that. That's got T-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> Oh dear! Anyway. That's cool. So and so, uh, we had talked a little bit before. You were looking at this uh, board that I had that uh, that was just announced on here, and we've talked about it before. But there's a the new chip. variation. Yes, of it. we've we've yeah. talked about the chip before, uh, which mm-hmm. I I don't like the name. It's too generic, you know. Like uh, it's just, yeah, it's like an acronym or something, right? Yeah, like yeah, it probably is. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm sure we. Anyway, we have covered it on here before, but they've got a new one called the Chip right. Pro, and I thought, aha. Uh-huh, um, Right, and chip the chip was the nine dollar. That was the nine dollar computer that we nine dollar one. This one's six bucks, is it? We were we were a little bit skeptical of it. Uh, they are producing it. It seems yeah, like they are making it. We yep. were wrong on that, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Um, and... Unfortunately, it's not suitable. The chip is not suitable um, for my. Just well, this is like yeah, this is like a media. Wise. I think it's yeah. MediaTek or someone like it's definitely like uh, one of those consumer level mm. chips that's really hard to get at, and so that's what's yep. interesting about it because it's making that more accessible with the mm-hmm. the range because it has built in Wi Fi and Bluetooth it's and all the Wi-Fi, all that yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so exactly. those pieces are interesting, <clears throat> but uh, so yeah, like Dave said, they just announced the uh, the the new thing, the Chip, chip Pro. Pro. Anyway, um, if I looked at it and I thought, oh, maybe I can use this. But then I looked at the photos of it and what? Anyway, <laughs> we will post a photo. And, of course, it, it's a typical little small module, right? It's designed to mount directly on the PCB. So they've done the uh, castellation thing, right, yeah. which is routing off your half um, holes on the side of the board. Right, right, so that they're little, you know, half moon plated holes on the edge of your board. And this is a common technique for mm-hmm. soldering, you know, yeah, like Wi Fi modules, GSM stuff like modules, that. Wi-Fi modules, Wi Fi yeah. modules, everything else, right? Yeah, right. soldering yeah. them Because you can actually pick and place it, right? You can pick and place and reflow them. Yes, yeah. yes, it is actually possible to reflow them. Or because they're holes, um, the holes are the same size as your 0.1 inch pin headers, you can plug pin it, you can solder pin headers to them as well. Right, and, right. you know, great, okay, fine. And, um, but wah, 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 wah. by looking at the photo here, they've populated the bottom side of the board. They've got a double-sided load. Yeah. And that means that this thing can't sit flat 
on the PCB. Right. Because and the so components one of, one are going to lift it off. Yeah, one of the uses is, is obviously you solder 0.1 inch headers in there and then it can yeah. plug into a breadboard or but that's the only way plug you into can another body. You, yeah. you know, you could do headers between boards if you wanted to, but that's definitely right. not pick and placeable then. Yeah, uh, no, it's, it's not reflowable directly onto your board. And I, oh, which I is weird because it does. It seems it says optimized for SMT with castellated edges, machine placeable and robot friendly. But like, yeah, like Dave's saying, how <laughs> it's going right. to sit like what two, three millimeters off the board? Just like big globs of solder between, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't you get can, it. I mean, you could do it with a. I mean, well, I, I don't know about the the reflowable on that piece. Now, but the interesting thing is actually. I personally, uh, so this is this is nice. This is the shrunk down version of the of the existing chip, and it's got the one gigahertz processor with oh, the yeah. no, it's, whatever, it's whatever, fine, whatever. It's a fine board. Um, the interesting yeah. thing is actually the other piece, the the GR8 or the Great, um, <laughs> and so uh, they're actually selling. So basically, I'm not sure what the actual number on the part number, the R8 processor is, yep. but um, they're selling that system was it system on module they call it like it's not it's like basically it's, it's a system on module yeah is it yep. is that what it's right yes okay. yeah that yeah is, yeah, yeah um, um som yes yeah yeah som dates back to all before this new internet of things bullshit you know i was mm-hmm. i was buying and using soms back in the late 90s right system on module yeah and so I th- so it must be on the backside. So they're showing this Toshiba again. Dave said, like you said, we'll we'll link it in so that you can see the picture on the backside of the actual board, which is the Chip Pro. There's I'm actually not sure what it is. I mean the Toshiba TC58, whatever. That must that's, be Flash, right? That's just the uh, Flash. Yep. So that's Flash. So, but you can the GR8 has integrated DDR3. So basically, you can get the processor and the DDR3 together in just a, that SOM, and yep. that's what's interesting because. That basically makes it accessible, um, and then they have this slightly gimmicky thing about one to a million. It's six dollars, um, and then they have a slider where you can put in one to, one to a million. Uh, <laughs> it's like okay, I, I get it. I know how to uh, multiply, uh, <laughs> but it's. I think it, this this piece is actually really interesting because it opens up uh, this chipset that definitely isn't possible to people that are buying in less than a million. So. Hmm. So they're rebranding it as their chip, right? I mean, obviously yes, it's someone else making and, it, but it's yeah, you know, it's, and and they're releasing a data sheet. They're going no NDA required, you know, right? Yeah, right. Um, so that actually is really and so like what Dave's saying. I think it would take a lot more because you'd have to you know plop down your own um, flash memory and stuff like that, but and you'd have to do all the other power stuff and everything. But um, that's that actually this is an interesting move forwards because using it as a as a measuring stick against like a raspberry pi right so people are designing with a uh, pi zero or a pi three whatever and then they say okay we're ready to do something with this there almost is literally no way to get that yeah. that that broadcom chip from yep. um from broad or from broadcom well, you can get it, but you've <laughs> got to go in and be sound like a big customer you've got to sign an nda and you've got yeah. to commit to volume and blah blah yep. blah yep. i'm sure yep. yeah yeah so Yep. Oh, here we go. It's the All Winner R8, which is a Cortex ah, yes. A8 processor yes. with. That's what's used yeah. in the uh, Orange Pi One, I think. Oh, is it? Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So. so yes, and you can get. I the wouldn't full even know what I'm doing with this it. stuff. Yeah. Like honestly, I'd know. <laughs> I'd be like, uh, okay, well, <laughs> yeah. All right. So, but yeah, getting the data sheet is really nice, and uh, data sheet. What am I saying? Why do I sound like you? What are you doing to me here, Dave? Sorry. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, that's nice. I mean, being able to see all that stuff. So, all winner may be the game winner. Who knows? <laughs> Although they've had issues with uh, security and stuff we've talked about in the past. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Yeah. Well, uh, I applaud but this. I mean, this is this is yeah. this is a nice. I mean, this really is a nice move. And um, so it'll anyway. be interesting to see if people if the people take them up on it. Um, so we'll see. Hmm. Why do they have a banana in the picture? For scale, maybe. Where is it? Yeah, but you can get big or little bananas. Anyway, maybe are they? That's like a Reddit joke. You never heard about that? Weird. No? I don't. I don't see this banana picture you're talking about. Oh, it's uh, sorry. It's on the main chip uh, page. If you go to the chip, not the chip pro. Chip. Yeah, yeah. That's always a. That's like a Reddit thing. I I, I never okay. actually understood right. it. It's banana for scale. So, right. I'm sure people can fire okay. up their meme meme engines. You know. Got it. Yeah. 
All right. <laughs> Unfortunately, I can't use this thing um, because it's just not the form factor I need. I can't. I need something to mount vertical. I need to densely pack these uh, processor boards vertically on my main board. So this one can't mount vertically unless you happen to use all the pins on one edge and not the other edge. Um, so. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. I guess if it's it's not like a bus system, right? You're not like able no. to plug board to board to board because they're not going to be sharing pins and try staying well, between them. No, no, exactly. Right. Yeah. Well, you, well, I don't know if they're tri-statable. I assume they are, but yeah. But then the chips that have to talk to each other and negotiate who's going to. Right. Right. Yep. Yeah. You get into the same Use problem the with like having yep. some kind of interface chip, like a, mm. like a whatever. Yep. Anyway. Well, but still interesting news. So there you go. So anyway, I'm working on that. Hopefully. Okay. Yep. Cool. That's great. That's a great, that's a great little project. I should be working on more worthwhile projects from my business standpoint, but I don't know. I just thought it'd be fun. Worthwhile. What is worthwhile? Uh, worthwhile is something that generates income for me uh. <laughs> as a self-employed uh, <laughs> <laughs> with a wife and two kids. Um, oh, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Dude, I, we were talking about this before the show. You're almost unrecognizable now. You've changed your appearance. <laughs> I, I started seeing photos of you and who's this hip, young-looking dude? You you totally changed. And this is deliberate, you were saying. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm bringing it up because it's hilarious. Uh, yeah, You've man. got some new hipster haircut. Yeah, I guess so. I've been I've been traveling a lot, so I guess I post pictures when I do that. But Yep. Um. I, I seriously did not recognize you. You would change your your appearance had changed so much. Well, when I show that up in one, Australia, you better you better yeah, I know. you know hold up a sign at the airport or something, man. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I would I, I would love to film that, but you can't film in airports. They'll like shoot you or something. Really, I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh yeah, mm. yeah. No, you're not allowed to mm. film in um, airport lounges and stuff. Yeah. Yep. Well, I have been traveling it. a lot, and uh, so I just got back from I did. Uh, so at the end of my Europe trip, I, I went to Maker Fair, New York for a day and got to see some people. I think that's, those are the pictures you're talking about. Yep. Got to hang out with the Adafruit folks for a little bit. Um, and I got to see the chipsetter actually up close and personal. So right. we had talked about that in our back and forth episode. We did. Neither of us seemed that keen on it. And I have since switched my thought about the actual machine. But he's, young, necess- and Im- he's young and impressionable. Oh, folks. yes. I'm so, yes. <laughs> Uh, but no, I got to talk to the, I got to talk to the team for a little bit and I got to see the machine up close. And, uh, so I told them and I'll say it here as well. I'm still not sold on, you know, it's the same thing we've talked about here a bunch, right? I'm not sold on the idea of needing, uh, the value proposition, the the, the value proposition for it being a good return on your time and investment. Now, yeah. their price point is what? Like it was like $4,000, $5,000, $4,000, $5,000. Yeah. Yeah. So probably not for a person you know maybe someone like uh you know like like mike harrison does that kind of stuff but he basically you know he did that stuff and and like other small job shop type stuff where yeah i mean but that's really not personal that's more business type thing Mm. right and um so yeah i i I stick by that i i i do i think that more companies probably would be uh on board and and i think that this thing is is great now unfortunately it appeals people like you know their eyes light up when they think about the possibility of manufacturing their own boards but then they don't mm. realize the practical reality of doing so right i have um, just like an urge to start drinking beer when i start thinking about that like, <laughs> right. like oh i have to do it myself oh god <laughs> i don't want to <laughs> yeah but and that's it makes, just, as that's you just said, experience talking right <laughs> yeah yeah i mean it makes sense for guys like mike Right, yeah. and and he's talked about this many times, and he's the same position we are. Um, yeah. It's that he happens to be in the position where, uh, yeah, he's got these clients. You know, he works for himself. He's got these clients where he manufactures. You know, runs of you know maybe a hundred of right. uh, you know some blinky lead controller board that he's done right. for a new uh, client, and and right. but usually that's, that's he's, un- he's, he's under the pump. He's right, really exactly. under the pump to get right. these done, and. It makes sense for him to do them himself, but he's put also years into automating that thing, writing yep. scripts and to do to directly. He only uses parts that he knows are in his pick and place machine and blah, 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 blah. 
Yep. Right? You know. Yeah, that is an optimized yeah. optimized yeah, process. And I think I think that would resonate yeah. with a lot of people that are doing their own, you know, anywhere from ten to a hundred, yeah, you're there, right? But once you get above a hundred, you know, like why and this is what that's what Macrofab is mm. trying to like replace for people or give to people without having your own equipment. And, you know, same with PCBNG and, and um, yep. uh, Circuit Hub, all those people, right? They're trying to kind of serve that market. But once you get above 100, even Mike will tell you, you know, like he's maybe not <laughs> yeah. 100, but whatever the number right. is, yep. you, you should go to a, a manufacturer at that point. It just doesn't make sense to keep doing it yourself unless you have some financial reason to do so, right? If you've got some right. crazy deal on parts or something, right? So. Right, yeah, if you've got reels. Well, even if you've got reels and reels and parts or something, you give them. <laughs> that's true the, yeah yeah to the assembly house that's yeah. what i do i buy the parts i ship them to the assembly house yeah, yeah right drop shipping's like, great i mean that's yeah. that's awesome um so yeah and, and so that's and so i told the team this right i, I sat i i sat there with them uh-huh. i i and I, but then okay so let me talk about the machine i've never seen a pick and place machine this dense before and yes it does look very dense yes i'll, I'll give them that it looks incredibly very dense and yes. uh, and <laughs> dense in a good way people uh, <laughs> please explain so it, dense. <laughs> please explain what you mean by dense for those who so, don't so so no. and actually it's it's an interesting offset so i've seen that tm245 as well right that's the um, yeah the chinese one yep yeah and, and that's you know that's one. that's a nice little machine too, but that two and a half three thousand dollars, but yeah, right, it's got the reels hanging out the side and exactly. So know, basically, like, if you think yeah. about it, it's like so if someone was holding their arms out right and they were like they were like flexing their biceps right and they're holding their arms out above their shoulders and in each hand they had a, a set of reels right. That's yep. what that's what a lot of pick and place machines look like. They're hanging out right. outside <laughs> the the envelope yep. of the machine. This is like yep. basically turning your arms over and then kind of folding them in towards your hips, like you're mm. almost got your hands in your hips, and then your uh, the reels are down underneath your arms. Then is that good yep. visualization? I don't know if that. that well, is, it, it looks like a MakerBot. It looks like a three D mm. printer. Maybe kind of thing. like like yeah, it's maybe. all in the one case. There's nothing hanging out the side. Yes, right? that that is true, and it is all enclosed. And I'm not sure yep. if that's for a reason. But then uh, the actual holders, the actual uh, the, what are those called? The re- real holders. God, the my brain re- is the uh, the loaders. The <laughs> my brain is broken, Dave. I I uh, you've just mental blocked me as well. <laughs> All right, the rest of the amp hour will be Chris and Dave try and sound younger than they are because their brains are broken. <laughs> feeders, feeders. <laughs> feeders oh thank my you. god, uh, they feeders. <laughs> Yeah, so they had built completely <coughs> custom feeders. Now, yeah, there is a ton of risk from that too. But these are basically they're at prototype stage. They're yeah, but past you have to. Stage. Without feeders, a pick and place machine is essentially right. useless. It's basically a gantry robot with. And yeah. there is no universal feeder out there. Every yeah. company protects the technology of their feeder. They're a single source. You cannot buy clones right. or anything. Well, and else. usually they're all, and that's the other you thing. Know. So usually they're very, you know, they're machine metal. They're, you know, they're yep. they're built for speed. So they have to be, you know, really pre- or not really precise, but really reliable. Mm. Right. Yes, that's really what a lot reliable. of those feeders and, are. And right? they make a lot of money on those. Oh, you want to buy your fifty thousand dollar pick and place machine? Would you like feeders with that? That'll right. be another fifty thousand. Right. Right, exactly. You know, like, right, and that's the thing where you get the most bang for your buck. If, if in terms right. of loading time, if you could, if you could buy a thousand feeders, you could just keep your reels on them. But that is cost prohibitive for everyone. So right. that's really where I am very impressed with these guys. They said they're, you know, they've got a a, a pulley mechanism in there. Uh, I posted a couple pictures, but I think they've done some other stuff. You know, they they talk about the speed on this thing. It's not. It's not. It's not going to be. It's not you fast. Know, no. Yeah, it's like twelve hundred parts a, an hour or something like that, which yeah. is lower than a bunch of other ones. But in terms of cost, and if you really look at other costs of like having more reels and, and lowering your load time, that's right. where you start. And then software stuff too. I think that's another big piece. Um, all of these things are very positive, and so that's where my mind was changed. And okay. uh, they said they're. At the so they, they had a bunch of uh, was it SLS like the you know like the powder printed three D printed stuff so yeah the selective yeah laser yeah laser sintering yeah yep. I think it was that kind of material it was three D printed but they were basically going said they're going towards molds right now so right. obviously that's okay. an expensive piece but um, yeah I was like I said those those reels or sorry those feeders were were super impressive um, you know I didn't really that, I didn't really get a feel for the actual machine itself but mm. um, you know, it like you said, the 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 feeders are are a big big piece it, of it. A tip and, for those who want to design their own pick and place machine, maybe start a company 
with pick and place machines. Design a feeder first. Pick and place, design a pick and place machine ain't that hard. It's XY motors, camera and software, right? And it's a vacuum suction-y head, right? Yeah, I think the software is probably a, a well, very difficult Software is huge. Here. Yeah. Software and feeders. Yeah. Right? Feeders are are, are the key to pick and yeah. play reliable feeders. Right. Yeah. Um, reliability being the main thing, right? Because yep. if you if you <laughs> if you think you're getting twelve hundred parts an hour and it jams in minute five, you're yep. not getting twelve hundred parts an hour. <laughs> and you've got to sit there and message it. Even uh, even the professional pick and place machines, the half million dollar ones, have mm-hmm. somebody there. 24 7 mm. to massage these things right when right things that's go the other wrong. cost I mean, right it's, it's yeah. the cost of rework exactly. it's the cost of monitoring yep. it's the it's the people cost so yeah yeah so all these things and so i like i said i'm excited about it um and it's yeah okay it, cool. so cool right. that was good i still uh, think it's a very limited market i you know uh, of course and i think they yeah. i think they understand that too okay. so uh, it was interesting though because there was the Wazer right next to it we mentioned at the same time or i mentioned in my version was, that's that's that uh water jet cutter oh right yep which okay. is already like way but i think the thing is it's all about perception right mm. it's about the same cost i think it's like four or five grand maybe maybe it's three or four grand but it's a water jet cutter where it's got uh, what do they call garnet like basically crushed up garnet is the abrasive and then you float it in water and then you shoot it in a like a laser like stream down at something so it's like a laser cutter but you can use it on things like yep. metal and um stone and stuff like that and that thing is just it's gone gangbusters on kickstarter but so like what's the difference there right hmm. and it's just perception right no one needs a freaking no. water jet cutter right i don't care how many how many times you say you're gonna you're gonna have a uh a ceramics project that you need to do as someone who had a bunch of tools still has one of them that do not get you know like it's like okay yeah. some people need them but definitely not that whole cadre of people that are, are backing the project so some people of that just is just buy perception because it, it's cool yeah it's perception they think they might need it and and people have don't. disposable income and that yeah, is right. honestly yeah, yeah. a great part of kickstarter right is absolutely you, you know you help you get people that are dreaming about needing something and you know <laughs> like those <laughs> anyways doesn't need to talk about All that right. uh <laughs> So uh, that was great, and got to see a lot of good people there. And then uh, the following weekend, I was at uh, Open Hardware Summit, and mm-hmm. so we've talked about that before, um, and had some really good conversations actually. So um, I know there was, but I, I was kind of watching Twitter a- after uh, stuff was were talked about, and I know you and I have talked about this stuff before, mm-hmm. and some of the stuff I didn't quite understand. So it Tell was us. good to like to get that clarification. Um, Michael Weinberg, who's one of the, uh, he's like the lawyer behind the whole thing, okay. who kind of did that stuff, and he's he's always been really he he's been part of the the um, the association for a long time as well. I think since the beginning, and so uh, I didn't realize. Okay, so so two things. One was you don't have to stop using the gear logo. That's not a big deal at all. Right. Uh, and so that's good. I I because I thought everyone was just going to switch over. I talked to a couple of people there, and they're like, "Yeah, I'll just use both." I'm like, okay. Yeah. Cool. Well, no, there's uh, no. I never thought that would. I didn't think that you would stop using it. Um, yeah, you would use okay. both. You would have okay, so the that was my misperception and then. you'd have the certified yeah. logo as well. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And then the other piece was, um, so I knew it was about trademark, but I didn't quite understand how all that stuff worked. Um, you know, so like. There was just more explanation about that. I'm not going to try and replicate the talk because I, I didn't catch all of it. I think that mm-hmm. stuff is either published already or will be published. And that's probably the best way to do it uh, is to watch Michael's talk. Um, right. Because I, I went and read some of the certification stuff too, like this license. And I'm just like, Ugh, I don't, you know, I've my, stayed in my, it, I don't care. Right. Yeah, no, Mike um, on Twitter, I don't know if yeah, you've seen it, but that. it was hilarious. Did, yeah. He said, who yeah. the hell would, who the F would sign this? Yeah. You know, right, like, yeah. and I think it's kind of uh, well, okay. So I don't know how effective it will be, but I think for me at least, if I was gonna start doing this stuff, it would be like it's like another mark that makes sense, and there's really no downside to the people doing it. Maybe that's uh, a misperception again, but I I don't think there's any uh, downside. If you meet the requirement, if you meet the strict requirement, 
Sure. Yeah, Probably exactly. Not, yeah. And if you, yeah, and and if not, like so people that are going to be interested in doing that in the first place, right? Are mm-hmm. people that are already bought into the whole uh, you know, all the all the requirements that are there, meeting all of them. Yeah. Uh, the community definition thing. That's great. Uh and then you know, there's probably there. There's definitely more teeth behind any kind of uh, prosecution if you really wanted to do it. So that's 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 all I got to say about that. <laughs> right. Um, Nothing yeah, like I said, in there, folks. No, and it, and it's really not. And um, so that's one thing that happened. Another thing that happened was so I also talked to so. Uh, I talked to Mike Osman and and Dimitri last week when when mm-hmm. uh, before and then I got to see Mike right after and I was kind of stating why would anyone even do this and Mike had a very passionate argument much of which I forget uh, but Mike made a lot of sense about it too so definitely Mike is the person to ask because like uh, what did he say he was talking about like everything was designed to be so he was very interested in licensing his stuff as open source and defending it as open source right so basically right. he said hack rf all that stuff has been designed from from the beginning to be open source mm-hmm. and having something behind it that is enforceable is important to him and i was like okay i respect that Fine. um yeah yeah and so i think what it comes down to is what we've basically been saying is like it's yeah it's going to be a big spectrum some things are going to be licensed some things aren't okay let's keep going um do you have any thoughts before I, I, I keep going? No, <laughs> no, I okay. think no. We don't get me started. We right. No, I yeah, of course, right. This to we their we last have t- totally yeah. flogged it. Now, what's what was interesting though is that when on the way out of town, so at the airport, then I was hanging out with uh, Jason Kreider, right? So we've had him on the show before a long mm-hmm. time ago, but he's from Beagleboard, and they've been doing open source a long time. Beagleboard's actually a foundation now. Uh, before it was like a project, and now it's outside of right. TI as a foundation or something as well, and. What we started talking about was interesting um, about what was really needed, right? And it, like this stuff is probably needed, right? Some at some level, all this legal stuff's needed. But the thing that we were really mm-hmm. talking about is what we really need is you know this is all very inward facing. You know, you're open hardware, you're not, you're this, you're that. What we really need is a PR team. <laughs> oh <laughs> right? God, no! No, no, no! Seriously, well, hear me, hear me yeah, out, right? Okay. Why does this even matter in the first place, right? Right. We think it's important, right? Mike Osman made a, a great point that I don't remember about why. I mean, like he obviously said it's important to him. It's important based around what he wanted to do and all that stuff, right? You think it's important. I think it's important. Well, but, hang on. You weren't saying that two weeks ago, a couple of weeks back. You said, man, I don't care. What's the- I, I don't care about, <laughs> about the details of this legal stuff because I, I think it's important to share ideas, but I don't think it's important to enforce it. it you know, like for my stuff, it doesn't matter, right? Because mm-hmm. this is all about marketing... A product based on its being open, right? Oh, okay. look, if you're if you're going their route, right, with the certified open hardware logo, yes, they need, right, they need PR, right? No, no, no. So I'm actually not saying about that logo even. Oh, you're saying I'm about saying, open hardware in general? Yeah. Why does it even matter, right? And and that's it, it was an interesting conversation around that because mm. like most people, like okay, so you're going to buy uh, and Okay, so I'll use Jason as an example, right? You're going to buy a Raspberry Pi versus a BeagleBone Black, right? Yeah. One's open, one's not. Does mm-hmm. it matter? And I don't know. Should it? I, I think it does personally. Uh, well, but who's your, but, who's your target market for the PR? Right. Well, that's the thing. It has to be people not even in the community. It's people like... Right. Yeah, and that's and that's where it, it, it was very interesting to me. So, uh, And it's, <laughs> it's something I, I don't know. Do to, those people care? Will right, it, exactly. Will, will the PR influence their buying decision? Right. Well, what what we basically came down to is like it's like a got milk campaign for uh, open hardware, right? And it's like sorry, I maybe... no, got milk. What's that? Oh, you guys don't have that there. No. It was a. Uh, it was basically like the the equivalent of the open hardware uh, association would be like the the dairy farmers of America. Yeah, that's right. right. Of course, you wouldn't have that. Basically, there was all of these these campaigns about drinking milk, the importance of drinking milk. Right or wrong, it doesn't matter. It was right. a PR campaign where they basically said you should be drinking milk. Your children should be drinking like, and it's like it's just a pure PR campaign, and it had people thinking about milk. Uh, and <laughs> I have seen this actually on the. On the Gruen uh, transfer, which is an Australian uh, TV show about advertising, yep, and it's exactly. absolutely fascinating. 
Yeah, and that is one of the, the most famous campaigns this, ever, yep, right? Yep. Yeah. They were talking about that campaign. Right. Yep. And yeah, especially and for like from. for like catchphrases and like right. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh Cool. Very interesting. Uh yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'm just less cranky than last week. But I think uh, <laughs> you are. Yep. Yep. You're definitely You were so cranky the other week. It was I like was... I don't care when uh, tell someone he gives a toss. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, he's chilled out with his new hipster hairdo. That's folks. what it is, you know. I, yeah. I let some of the steam off with the haircut. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> oh boy! Yep. Oh, can we talk about? Do we the, have to? Can we talk about we the Wi Fi kettle? Oh, that one. Oh, I thought you were going to go yeah, solar. Yeah. What? Solar. What, no, what no, did no. Think Sol- I was going to talk solar about? Solar roadways. I thought you were going to. Oh get no, back no. To. I'm going to do solar roadways to finish off. Yeah. Hell okay. yeah. Oh, okay. Right, right. <clears throat> and, and then a bang. Yeah. Yeah, we have got another ten minutes. Uh, yeah, so the <laughs> Wi-Fi kettle. This was actually really funny. We told, I, can we say we told you so? Like, you know, well. like the, you know, your Wi-Fi <laughs> connected light bulb. It's like this is what the world's come to. Yeah. You know, and uh, this is not a good future. <laughs> right. This is this is not what I signed up for. <laughs> I, the thing I don't get is okay. So like, it's still connected by. Uh, <laughs> it's just the base that's enabling a single relay, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's basically it. Okay, so explain the device first, because maybe that would okay. make sense. A, a, a guy, sorry, we don't know his name. I could probably call it up. Uh, he was on Twitter. He bought this Wi-Fi connected kettle, right? So you, sh- you can be able to turn it on through your phone or through bloody Amazon or whatever. I don't know, right? And the Internet of Things kettle. Internet of things. And you can tell what's going to go wrong here. Anyway, (laughs) he got up in the morning and he thought, right, I'm going to use my new kettle today. Today is the day. And it took him 11 hours (laughs) to boil water. And he live tweeted this, right? And it was followed by like thousands of people retweeting and loving it and, uh, you know, everything else. And it took it. And we'll link in the page below. It is hilarious. (laughs) They've screen captured his tweets and all of his efforts trying to get the software stack platform infrastructure yeah. working yep. just to turn on his freaking Wi-Fi kettle. And he finally did it. He finally nailed him. And the whole internet cheers as, you know, at the end of the day when he finally did it. He boiled his water and he posted a video of the thing finally working and boiling that water. That is so after crazy. 11 hours full, full time, nonstop, trying to get this thing working. I'm not sure what the actual issue was in the end. Yeah. Um, you know, it could have been something simple um, that was obvious in hindsight, but well, anyway. still, I mean, like, okay, usability oh, stuff. and it's got voice control as well. Let, let's compare oh. it to the the exact same thing in any other in any other British kitchen, right? Yep. Walk in, fill the kettle, flip the switch, flick the come, switch, come back when it's done. Like, flick and it's the just... switch. That electricity stuff goes to right. an element through yep. some copper and then it yep. heats up using ohm's law and uh-huh. <laughs> boils your water yeah right but it boils it faster than an american's kettle as the brits like to remind me oh, because right. okay. 240 over 120 <laughs> yeah yep yeah blah blah yep. blah thanks a lot <laughs> i know please don't please, please don't write of, in <laughs> 2400 watts of goodness yep. yeah uh yeah and so like from a user like <laughs> <laughs> Someone was telling me the other day about a toothbrush that was wi- Wi-Fi connected. Yeah, or like yeah, yeah, Wi-Fi connected. Yep, you hook what up your phone. What the and hell? It, and, and there's an app that monitors. Oh no, no, no. this your... wasn't even for that. It was just oh, like, right. oh, okay. Oh, you've you need to stop brushing on that one side and switch like, to the other other side. Mine has got like a little buzzer in it that goes beep when you're right. you know when the thirty seconds sure. are up and you're supposed if, to switch to the other if side. If that's even necessary, right? It's like if, if, yeah, I, I I thought that was advanced black magic technology right. that shouldn't be in there, you know, like but... <laughs> black magic. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell me what to do, toothbrush. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, okay, so let's talk about uh, margin. This is a, a. I think this is actually a large um, a large it's largely due to margin problems right because if you make a kettle the same way for (laughs) 10 years let's give this be generous to say 10 years as you do it say you come up with the greatest new whiz bang uh, kettle design other people you know you lose brand loyalty you you get copycats Mm -hmm. from china everything happens how do you start to differentiate 
Well, you differentiate by saying, <laughs> Add <Wi-Fi>. now with <laughs> Bluetooth, now with exactly. Wi-Fi, right? Not you can't it. live without this. And so it's like, oh, God. And it probably works. I mean, I would love to have seen, <laughs> no, oh, we now, uh, how to differentiate yourself. Oh, now it's made in the US of A. You know, yeah, something yeah, maybe, sure, sure. right? Or it's that's or another, it uses uh, that's a new another titanium. PR thing. Uh, yeah, that's or another it uses PR a thing. new titanium alloy that's right. lighter and stronger and never rusts or whatever. I don't know, something like right, that. Right. right. People don't look at the box and say, you know, if they even go to the store and look at a box, they don't look at the Amazon review and say, Oh, look, it's exactly the same as everything else. Like people right. are looking for some kind of differentiation yeah. in a marketplace with yeah. tons and tons because of devices. Because it can be in the title, the Amazon title, right? It's got Wi Fi sure. in the title. Sure. You know, it's an extra feature. You know what you and I should do? We should come up with some <laughs> some vaporware feature that we license the name to, right? We can oh, call it Yes. Yes, let's DC, do it. D, so Dave and Chris, DC yep. enabled. Mm, DC enabled. No, that wouldn't work. That might be confusing. DC ether or something. I don't know. DC ether. There we go. DC ether. Uh, we can brainstorm and this. You have to you have to be part of the 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 consortium. Right, of course. Right, right. Uh, to be DC Ether certified, and uh, and then if you are, then you can use that legally. It's a trademark name, right? right? And you and you get the logo and the stamp you can put on your yep. web page, and yep. And yeah, I may and have you just. You only have to pay us how much? Oh, pff, I don't know. One uh, one percent of your revenue or something. I don't know how, yeah, because HDMI does that too, right? HDMI, yeah, yeah, USB, yeah, yeah. all yep. like uh, yep. even SPI, right? That was started as a Motorola right. thing. Right, yes. Yeah. Um, and Motorola lost it at some point. I don't know how that so happened. So was I squared C. I squared C was a Philips thing. Oh, interesting. And okay. I, I don't know if it was licensed. I think it might have been, yes, to you, it was licensed if you wanted to use the official logo because the logo was trademarked. Uh-huh. But yeah. if you did it, so if you wanted to use the, the you know, the they had a specific logo, the I squared C with a TM next to it, right? Mm-hmm. If you wanted to, like it was old Philips data books used to have data sheets, used to have this logo, oh, yeah. you know, it was right. like an outline. If you search for <laughs> uh, I squared C logo, you'll find it. And if you wanted to use that logo and say your chip, you know, targeted other chip makers, if your chip was I squared C compatible, yeah, you had to pay Philips a bloody royalty. And now you'd have to pay it to Broadcom. Yeah, but so so that's why others started oh, calling it, it oh the uh, two wire, or, oh two you wire. Know, and, yeah, you know they yeah. called it like two wire interface. So you know mm. maximum come and this is a two wire interface chip. Nudge nudge, right. wink wink. Happens right, to right because they exactly all said they're the one wire, the Dallas one wire <laughs> yeah, yeah, thing. Right? Yeah, yeah 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 the Dallas one wire, and it's like yeah, yeah that's how they got around <laughs> paying Phillips their royalty. So anyway, Aye. yeah, isn't that fun? I I I. I guess that's still around, but I don't know. You mm. sort of see I squared C on everything, but but they don't use the logo any for them. I think the logo's gone the way. Well, of it's the, the thing dodo. when you lose it, when you lose trademark, then it's just yeah. you know it's like it's, Kleenex it's or anything else, right? Yeah, you yeah. basically have to fight against that to. Yeah. Yes, to keep your trademark, otherwise right. it becomes invalid. If you let everyone use it, then it becomes public domain essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So. Yep. Wi-Fi, what a nah, fail. Fun. Anyway, it's hilarious. Link, We'll link in the article. Just oh, yeah. read it. It's, it's great. Really good. Yep. <laughs> and I love the fact that, you know, the whole internet cheers when he, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Somebody tweeted, and I'm going to drop an F-bomb here. Why oh, don't prepare- you just get a normal fucking kettle? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, they ain't wrong. And it got 79, you know, 250 likes, you know. Like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and, and somebody uh, else tweeted at this point. I'm desperate to avoid this future at all costs. Yeah, yeah. It's just I. Uh, I, don't, I so I think about this stuff. So okay, so I also wanted to talk about the uh, the XKCD comic, which I loved. Uh, it was called Work Seventeen One Seven Four One, and basically Randall's pointing out all of the uh, all of the arguments and meetings that happen around design decisions. You know, for stuff like yeah. this, at yeah, some yeah, point, yeah. Yes, at some point, at yeah, the yeah. kettle manufacturer, they had to decide if it was going to be Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, right? And, yep. <laughs> you know, then all the buttons they had to do and everything else. I, I, I think he could have really gone to town with that one. Oh yeah, he, 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 he could have made he, this poster like, size, I, I, right? Yeah, yeah, I know, poster yeah. sized. Yeah, and <laughs> I think I think we get the point though. That's the yeah, main yeah, thing, yeah, you know. Yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we should redo this. We should draw. We should redraw <laughs> this and add, you know, like. Real world engineering uh-huh, stuff right, right. to it, and like we, yeah, you could add a hundred right. things. 
<laughs> inductor changed by 20, 20 micro henrys because of fcc testing uh, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> figured out figured out empirically <laughs> supply change change because component obsolescence and right like right that. There's yeah just countless. Found, found out at 4 p.m on a friday <laughs> yeah uh, the uh ceo did did not like the shade of matt black oh so yeah we had to, there's that know, one yep yeah yeah, yeah. Coming yeah. from Altium, that's this is the this is the uh, <laughs> the outsider perspective. This is the we're just reacting. We're not we're not we're not pushing for something. We're just reacting to the, right. the, the world that we're. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wonder how big you could make that. That'd be awesome. Oh, I'm sure you could do a whole. Ah, uh, yep. But I mean, like, so the main thing though is like all of these things. I think about this stuff often, like especially with home goods and stuff like that. Th- how much stuff is really needed here, right? Okay, so like you could really take the entire spectrum of you know, IOT home devices, right? Some of the things mm. are, I will finally capitulate and say, some of the things are convenient. Uh, a Nest, a connected thermostat like Nest no. is convenient if you want to warm up your house before you get home. Is it necessary? No. People have been getting away with programmable thermostats for a long time. And before that, they had regular thermostats. And sometimes you just wait until it warms up, right? That's just yep. the cranky old man uh, gene kicking in. Um, hmm. Back in my day. Uh, <laughs> but you don't need a phone-connected, app-connected light bulb. Like, just just stop yeah. it. Stop it. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I don't think there's much of anything that's needed, right? It's all about... We're, we're, we're into the age of convenience, and that's because that's all that's really... I, I would well, be interested we're, we're to hear about... We're in the about, age of wankery, too. Sure, of course. But no, nah, let's be fair. That's, that's always happened, right? If you look at, like, those old... Sure computer model like this old computer ads like oh now has you wanted you had 16 colors now you have 24 i can like, remember back in the 80s you remember oh no you wouldn't remember but the no. uh personal <laughs> robot craze you need a home personal uh, robot right. the the robot 2000 you know asimo uh, <laughs> no, yeah but these things were these know, things were big in the 80s and it was like you need to have the robot with with the coffee cup holder so it can you know, so it can follow you around with your coffee cup and, you know, right. holding your coffee cup for you. Sure, it's like, right. Yeah, like... <laughs> and and no. so that's the thing, like, in terms of actual, like, new appliances that people need... Right. Eh, that yeah. hasn't happened in a while. I mean, like, cell yep. phones were probably one of the right. big ones. Um, but even that was just a extension of the phone. Like, so all these things, like, the a lot of this is just lifestyle enhancement, not not mm. like, no one needs any of this stuff. No, and that's right. I, I know that, that that argument can be taken very far back of like, oh, what do you really need other than a grass hut and, you know, maybe clothes? And, you know, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. yeah, I'm sure. Okay, so, it, yeah, I can go all the way there. But um, especially with this network-enabled stuff, I, I love hearing – so there are some legitimate uses, right? Accessibility, certain things, but probably not mass market. Um, you know, like, I mean, like uh, like um, handicap accessibility, stuff like that. Like, there are some legitimate – uses there um mm-hmm. but in terms of like needing a lot of this stuff it's just an extra layer of marketing basically right now we'll see right speaking of marketing <laughs> you had one last thing you wanted to talk about solar freaking roadways <laughs> oh my goodness <clears throat> i'm debating i'm still debating whether or not to do a video on this yeah. um <laughs> Leave your thoughts down below if I should or not. They have finally done their first big public installation. Mm-hmm. Is it on a road? Because it's solar roadways. No. No, it's, they weren't no, allowed to do that. It, it's, out, it's on the footpath out front of some dunnies, um, mm. which is, for you yanks, it's a toilet block. for you know. uh-huh. um, <laughs> Does it generate power? Because it's solar freaking at roadways no it doesn't generate any power at all they haven't even hooked the solar cells up do oh, the, dave do the you blinky. gotta you gotta you, you gotta let go man it's do, just gonna eat you alive do the blinky leds work no only seven of them out of 30 still work <laughs> <laughs> like two-thirds of them were delivered faulty and, maybe you could do the xkcd comic about uh, the solar roadways uh, like do you like the drawing thing <laughs> yeah yeah right <laughs> it's like the, uh, have they uh, like uh, do they install drainage on this thing no they've got you know like uh, it's just it is the most uh it is the biggest installation debacle i've ever seen it is ridiculous 
right? They when, when they actually got there, they, there's a link. We can probably add a link to a, a news report. Uh, we only mm-hmm. found out this later that um, they've now admitted, yeah, it doesn't generate any power. Yes, all the panels were delivered faulty, but they still installed them. They knew this. They knew it wouldn't generate any power. They knew the LEDs wouldn't work. Most of the LEDs wouldn't work. And they and it wouldn't heat the tiles. The heaters didn't work, right? <laughs> so the three big things, that the three only things that this thing is supposed to do, well, out of four, actually, you know, it's supposed to have cars going on it, which they didn't do either. So the yeah. four things this thing is supposed to do, generate power, have cars going on it, blink its bloody lights, and uh, melt snow. The four things. It can't do a single one of them. And they still went ahead with the installation. What the? Marketing, man. Marketing. Oh, yeah, because they had to PR. They, because they knew the press was showing up and they had to be shown to do, and whoa, we can get some blinking LEDs working. Oh, that'll keep everyone happy. And it did, apparently. There's yeah. news reports, people glowing about this is the future. Holy shit. Hey, got shit. you talking about it. Got you talking about oh. it. <laughs> You're just a slave Bloody to the machine, hell. man. You're just a slave to the machine. Oh, man. <laughs> I... <laughs> Unfortunately, I have right, to let's, let's because say, I've, let's, I've done five videos I know, I know. on solar. Yes, you're, you're invested you know, now. Right. I'm invested. Right. Yeah. But why about, would you I, go ahead? Has anyone <laughs> else have been in that situation where your product does not do a single thing that you claim, but you went ahead and did a trial or something anyway? Like, didn't you uh, didn't you talk about that at like trade shows? <laughs> Isn't that what a trade show is? <laughs> no, we last oh, minute soldering. The old smoke and mirrors demo. Yeah, you know? yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. But no, no, we we always got something working in the end. No, oh, you okay. know that was you know good enough. Um, Sounds like they got some LEDs working, Dave. I'm just they saying. got some LEDs blinking, and it's hilarious. <laughs> there's video of somebody coming along, some member of the public coming along, and some of these LEDs are just failed, right? So they're just like stuck on. They're supposed to be blinking and doing patterns and stuff, and somebody comes along and jumps up and down on it, <laughs> and it fixes it. All, all the oh, LEDs yeah. go out. It's hilarious. <laughs> it's yeah. so. So I don't know. At a certain point, you just you write it off. You say, "I mean, it's going to make you upset that they keep getting press about it." But uh, yeah. they're not the first hucksters. They're not going to be the last ones. Yeah, it's just anyway. I thought that was it's just, so. I might do a video just like laughing at it, just like five minutes of just laughter. So mm, I yeah. don't know. Anyway, okay. Uh, let's end on some positive stuff. Uh, we can just run through some of these links because uh, we don't. I don't even know what I would say about them. Uh, I we've talked about Megabots in the past. Uh, they're actually showing all their design decisions as they redesign this robot. I still think it's it's uh, crazy. So I don't know if you if people don't know it's that American team that's gonna fight a Japanese team with giant fighting robots and they, but basically they're making it into like a series too. So worth worth taking a couple minutes to watch. Uh, right. okay. They've done some some testing and you know it's cool. Um, what else? Uh. Well, you mentioned the, the 3D robotics thing. You had posted about that. Oh, yes. I had no idea until I saw this article today. This is huge. Of course, we've had uh, Chris Anderson on the show before. Uh, yeah, which maybe is this isn't e- really an uplif- uplifting note. Uh, no, no, this news. is uh, yeah. it's not. I yeah. thought they were like like number one or number two in the drone business. They've basically collapsed um, yeah. and could have completely gotten out of the hardware drone business. It just did not work for them. They burned through like well, 100 yeah, they- million bucks in cash. In VC well, they did cash. a big thing with the the solo. That's what the, the, the that's solo. what the, they invested the so big bet was. I don't yeah. know how you can invest so much money into one little drone. Like, uh, how many freaking engineers have they got working on this? Oh thing? no, no, I I'm mean, sure uh, it was. Like, I'm sure it was. Uh, come on, you got to build out the factory and stuff too. If you're if you're, yeah, if you're okay. trying to make right. a consumer you can product, build a lot you're of cash on factory. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and build up for for production mm-hmm. and all that sort of stuff. But anyway, well, they moved out of Mexico a long time ago too. That right. was that was one of the things they had done, and they moved everything to China, I believe. So. Because because I remember the talk. Uh, Chris was saying, yeah, where there was a big step for them to bring their pick and place machines in house. They were doing their in house boards and stuff like that, and that really worked well for them. And wait, when he was on like, the show, yeah. How long ago was that? That was one of our early interviews, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, it was one of our early interviews. Yeah, like yeah. fifty or something, thirty. Huh. I don't know. No, not well. Anyway, it was right Maybe after he had done uh, Makers. Oh, uh, episode one hundred and five. So that oh, was twenty twelve. Yeah. So right. four years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. wow. So. And um, anyway, yeah, they they've basically well they haven't gone bankrupt, but they basically had to completely pivot. So now the world in twelve right. months they've gone from the world's leading drone company to a company that now no longer makes drones and they're doing what is that they've now pivoted to software 
enterprise software is their new focus. Right, because one of the things they were talking about doing was also making, you know, these consumer level drones, but also then the the SaaS level, like, okay, so now you buy a drone as an architectural firm, you throw this thing in the air, it zooms around, and then it basically scans and does like modeling, I think like in the cloud. I believe that's what it was. Right. Um, So it's some sort of image processing maybe a drone collaboration and communication stuff or something like that. Yeah, they were working with uh, Autodesk, I think, at some point. Oh, okay, so, right. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Anyway, they've, you know, they haven't gone bankrupt, but they're basically uh, basically totally collapsed. They had to sack a whole bunch of people, I think. And it's, yeah. Yeah, they've got, well, I, I would say they've essentially gone bust. I mean, you know, if you're not making uh, I drones I don't anymore, really know, but yeah. I, yeah. I don't know how well, this stuff well, works. Well, to me, if you're a drone, the world's leading drone company and you don't make drones anymore, you've gone bust. I mean, that's just, you know, like... <laughs> I don't know. Just IBM, IBM uh, doesn't fail. make hardware anymore. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes, they do. But Some. What, what do they make? They make... Uh, not much. I don't think they even make servers anymore, do they? Uh, did they sell their server division? I can't remember. Anyway. I thought they did, yeah. Anyway. Uh, yes. Oh, okay. didn't they sell it sure. to Fuji or something? I don't know. Anyway, whatever. Um, but yeah, they, they they'll survive as a company, but they've basically completely failed. At their yeah, well, especially well, it's very vision. different. I mean, so they had already moved away from the DIY piece, right? And that's yeah, yeah. fine. Yeah, but they'll, uh, they'll, they'll go in. We, you and I were talking before the show, and like this, you know, we, we don't know any of the inner dealings. But one thing that I know is that the NBA playbook says once you've, <laughs> if you want to grow, you got to keep going more and more towards. B two B large scale like inter- enterprise level stuff, right? And it's like you can do that, but then you know these big bets, it's more dependent on smaller companies. Mm. Yeah. And I was talking, I was telling Dave about the uh, there was an article about I forget where I was hearing about it, but it was about Mailchimp, right? And Mailchimp mm. is a so we actually use it for the Amp Hour and stuff like that. It's an email program, but they've been around. There's software company that's been around 16 years, and they've held on by just like. Not basically on debt. giving everyone the finger yeah, saying, and, yeah every time every time someone comes in and says oh you should really pivot to to you know enterprise level and or they just we'll, kept serving we'll invest money in you and yeah, you know like right. you can yeah no they've given right. them the middle finger and and i, and I other... love that there is something to be said i was like screaming this at altium mm-hmm. for every day i was working there it's like there's nothing wrong with being the world's best pcb tool company why try and do yeah. anything else there's no nothing wrong with being the world's best mail email client right yeah, sure you know, sure like why okay so i i actually do have an interesting point i was thinking about this as so i was driving when i was going to uh, make your fair new york i was driving into the lincoln tunnel right well i wasn't driving i was getting driven right, right. and i was thinking who the hell planned this like, like there are like obviously like so I think the counterpoint to that is that at some point there are people that are thinking that big. And I, I know that it takes a lot of stuff to get to that point. Right. And there's trade-offs to do so, right? Long timelines, lots and lots of money invested, lots of community uh, interest, obviously, for infrastructure projects like that. But like I just started I, I, I started to have a panic attack just thinking about all the planning you would have to do to make a tunnel that goes right. under the water that then you build so that people don't die and then all those commuters <laughs> go through every day. And so like there are big dreamers out there and and there's obviously a lot of players in that too. So I th- I think that's the positive side of it, but it's often misguided, right? It's not like Well, yeah, people yeah, think Yeah, for an email company you're not yeah, building no. a tunnel. Right. <laughs> this comes back to bite governments as well. Um, uh-huh. People, 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 people. Much, um, people think that the only way to grow a company is to keep expanding it. You know, and this is like it's it's like you must have growth. You know, you must have that ten percent compound of growth every every year, right? It, it why. Why? Well, you're saying the only, I mean, that okay, is the only way to grow a company, but yeah, there's, that's not the only way to, to have a company. Or no, to, exactly. For a company and, to And governments thrive. work the same way. You know, governments are right. operated like a business. Like, oh, we must have 10% growth per year. Our country mm. must have 10% growth. Why? Right. <laughs> like, yeah, no, no, that's you know, true. Like, tr- sometimes yeah. treating it like a bit, like a, a big business like that is, yeah. that's why often going, <clears throat> um, floating your company 
on the share market is yeah. the wrong move because then you have shareholders and they want this. They want right. this compounded growth every year. They expect it. Right. So it, it's ruined countless companies. Right, exactly. And it's basically, it's like a, it's a contract that's made, right? It's like, yeah. okay, we're going to grow. We're going to make money for people. And there's, yep. yeah, there are certain ways you're going to do that by expanding into new markets or whatever you're going to do. So maybe that's part of the MBA playbook. It's also tied to the shareholder value and stuff, but it's not always fun and it does unfortunately hurt companies sometimes. Yep. So interesting, uh, since since you mentioned the, the government piece as well, I, I saw they were talking about um, uh, economic output based on space. And the thing we didn't mention last two weeks ago is the whole space race, Boeing, SpaceX. I just, I was really surprised. I, I honestly I, I thought you were I didn't know there's gonna... any race between Boeing. I, yeah, I, I knew I watched uh, the SpaceX, um, Elon Musk's uh, SpaceX. Yeah, and that was like thing. a special kind of crazy, right? That, that, that I heard that was a little crazy. But uh, yeah, Boeing's trying to get there too, apparently. Um, and uh, I don't think they will because there's no profit in it. There's no profit motive. Right. They, they can't do it. Elon Musk can do it because Elon Musk is the biggest shareholder in SpaceX. He's got it by the balls and he can say, we're going to, you know, waste 100 million or spend, invest 100 million bucks cash in this. I don't care if there's a return. And he said this basically mm-hmm. in his um, speech. It's like, I'm going to do it anyway. Right? Right. And, right. And yeah, he said the only someone, reason he yeah. makes money anymore is to get off the planet. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's, yeah. yeah. And... You know, you need someone like that to do it. A Bo- yeah. Boeing, I, they cannot do it. The shareholders will not allow it. Once the shareholders right. realize there's no return on their investment, they will force them right. to scrap it. Guaranteed. Right. Guaranteed. Well, there was, Unless so, they can get money from the taxpayer somehow. Right. Well, I was trying to, I was trying to find the article. So basically it was a discussion on Reddit, and I, I apologize, I, I can't find it right now, but they were talking about some of the multiples of, of space investment and stuff like that. and and But basically also... The space, uh, sorry, the um, yeah, space race. So like the the Cold War space race type stuff, mm-hmm. um, and how that is an actual natural um, outlet for economic surplus, right? So right. you can either use your economic surplus to go invade other countries, or you can use it to get off the planet. <laughs> and obviously, the second one is a lot better. Uh, <laughs> yeah, hello and, America. Uh, and, but then all that's just the benefits of uh, you know having investment in that end goal, right? It, so obviously, that's the same thing of like dreaming really big and you know having shared interests with the public of you know why why do we want to do this in the first place? But oh, once I, you do that, yeah, yeah. and there's money behind it, and then it's like you know that that is that money just that that just goes everywhere. You know, like it's it. Mm. Improved science oh, on it multiple yeah, yeah. levels. No, totally. Technology benefits from all yep. the ricochet yep. um, inventions and everything. So it's great. The the moonshot, the the Apollo program and yeah. uh, Gemini and everything before yep. that, and 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 the Mercury program. That yeah. was the single best investment America ever made. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, everything everything we talk about on this show is directly tied to that. <laughs> exactly. There, there is nothing that isn't. No, I mean, exactly. Yeah. Yep. And I watched a documentary last night on the Large Hadron Collider. How it, uh-huh. you know, how and it was like how it went from you know, like building the thing to you know, finally finding the Higgs boson and everything else, right? Mm-hmm. And um, they didn't they, they didn't find it yet, did they? I yeah. thought they did they. Yeah, I thought they, they they disconfirmed that. Oh, did they? Okay, I didn't. I haven't heard a follow up since. Okay. okay, I'll have to check. Anyway. Sure, people will scream at us and correct. Whatever, anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, whatever. Anyway, yes, it was bigger pressman announcement saying, I think we found it, you know. Like, oh, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, and I, everyone yeah. cheered and, yeah, right. And then we <laughs> forgot about it, yeah. <laughs> right. And, um, <laughs> yeah. and science continues, you know, like, yep. Well, and, we'll, we'll link in that documentary. I'd love to actually yes, watch that because that's um, great. Yeah. I was actually going through my email the other day and I, <laughs> I, I found a, a link to uh, uh, a URL, is the large headline collider blown up the world yet or something oh, like that right. yeah yeah, yeah. Well, it was number like one of, of those days, you can have a count a number of days since the world no no it's just up. like you go there and it says right, yeah. nope. no uh, yeah yeah i've seen that <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. It's good. oh sorry has the large hadron collider destroyed the world yet dot com yep <laughs> nope <laughs> <laughs> it's great hats yeah. off to whoever did that yeah uh, <laughs> and anyway yeah somebody got up in the in this documentary in the press conference and said 
You know, I'm an economist. What financial benefit will come from this? You know, look, you have to have a financial benefit. And the dude just said, I don't know. And that's a good <laughs> part about it. You know, like right, that's why right. we need to do it. And right. yeah. I don't think, yeah, I don't think we're, I think we're going to preach to the choir on the benefits yeah, of, yeah, of hard I science and, yeah. and investing in. Yeah. <laughs> in oh, I'm sure there's not a single Space person. travel, right. Who, if you don't agree with us, yeah. we would love to hear from you. Please tweet us. Uh, we are at the Amp Hour or Dave's at EEV blog. I'm at Chris underscore Gamble. We will promptly, probably ignore you, but we'd love to hear from you anyways. <laughs> uh, you can write to us, feedback at theamphour.com, or you can give us more money than we already have on our Patreon page so that we keep spouting our ridiculous know-nothing ideas <laughs> and you can hear us every single week. Anywhere else, Dave? Nah, that'll do it. Okay. That was so professional. Right. Thanks, man. That was like an outro without doing an outro. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to you next week. Catch you next time. because my hair that's why i have uh i have i have broadcaster hair now yeah yeah